Hi everyone, this is Bobby from Decoding and this is our Braintree API project and this is a walkthrough tutorial to show you what we can do with the API using uh, Python and Django Web Framework. So let's jump straight in. This is GitHub, the link to this project uh, will be in the description but it's called Did Django Braintree API and all you need to do is follow the readme file instructions which you the first thing you must do is you clone the directory you make a virtual environment and then what you do is you pip install the requirements and change the settings so we're going to we're going to plow through and get that done i have already downloaded this project so we can jump straight in this is the settings.py file we haven't changed much other than we've added some installed apps so we've got api and users here and we are using the same database that comes straight off the shelf which is the SQLite 3 nothing too heavyweight we have changed the static files from default to this because we are using static files in this project uh, we've got login URLs um, and then we've got the email configuration so this is using Gmail and we've got an app password. You can use other email providers, but that's how we've configured this. Uh, we're sending it from bobby at decoding.com. This is my app password, but it will be canceled before you see this video. The same can be said for my Braintree keys. These will be removed before you see this video. So these are sandbox keys, but you will also need production keys as well if you're gonna use this in production. We get the API keys from Braintree Sandbox. When you set up the account, you then go to Settings and API and you can find your keys here. So the client library key is the public key, private key, environment, and then the merchant ID. When you go production, it will the environment will change and so will the keys. So that is the settings.py. Uh, the URLs no changes needed there in fact let's jump straight back into the readme file so there are the settings we've got the um the brain tree settings here so the next step is to make migrations to migrate and then set up a server okay so this is an a cmd let's make migrations so this is assuming that you've already got your virtual environment set up so python manage.py make migrations that worked lovely and then we've got make uh, sorry migrate and then lastly we've got when it's done when it's done python manage.py on server. Happy days. Right, let's go and open up uh, incognito screen, local host. There we go, Braintree API demo. So it has all of the features of the user auth, sign in, sign up, forgotten password. It does have an account screen, but this one also has a cart screen. Uh, we do have another video that we've released, which is the the Django Stripe API demo also, which it has exactly the same features as this. So let's sign up. Bobby at decoding.com. Sorry, this is taking a little while. Hi, Ru, let's go. Cambridge Cams Brilliant. Sign up. Hopefully an email will be sent. We've sent you an email to verify your account. Brilliant. So if we go to my email. Copy link address. We're in incognito, so just make sure that we have all the CSS loaded from this side. Let's go there. Thank you. Your email has been verified. That's perfect. So this is the user account. 
like I said, the only difference between this and I use Auth is that this has a cart as well. So let's have a look at the cart. Okay, so this is um, all generated from Braintree. So I will show you the HTML documents, but essentially there's an element that gets picked up from the JavaScript from Braintree, and then it creates this um, this element that you see here. So we have a choice, we can either add a card or PayPal. So we'll go with card. And the dummy card for sandbox is 4111111111. All the ones. And then providing the expiration date is after today. So it's put next year. And then pay. Again, that's hard coded. 1652 is, is hard coded. Your payment was a success. It'll take us back to our user account, I believe. There we are, back in our user account. And now what we've got is an invoice, which is great. Uh, if we go back into the car itself, it should now give us the option to select the card that we had before. There we go. So if we, we can carry on using that card, just press pay, or we can choose another way to pay and then we can add another card or PayPal. Okay, so that's the project. So um, it, like I said, it has all of the functionalities of our user auth project, except this has now got a cart. Uh, it doesn't let you pick products or anything like that. The idea is that you can just pick this up and use this as a way of taking online payments in one of your projects. So let's jump into the code itself. We don't need to go through the user's uh, PY files in any great detail, but we will need to go through the API application. So we'll start with the API HTML. So in this one, we have an element. This form element has come straight from the Braintree docs, as has the JavaScript. So if you visit this URL here, then you can get the form element straight from Braintree and drop it straight into your project. But we do also have a JavaScript file here from Braintree. So straight off the bat, we do a jQuery get script call and we go to the drop-in. So it's a minified JS there. Um, we're looking for the query selector there is the button, so it's BT button button. And if you look here, that's what we're calling it. So it's, it's uh, almost a listener for when the form is submitted. And then Braintree JavaScript is then doing all of the hard work. So we've got the Braintree drop-in here that creates the, um, the element itself. And then a little bit further down, we're doing an Ajax call. So we're posting to payment and we're sending the payment method nonce and a payload, the amount, the currency and the description. So if you have seen our Stripe API, it's the same as that, it's just we've just converted it to Braintree. And if it's successful, if the payment is successful, then we get a JSON response or OK, and we, we fire an alert, and then we uh, redirect to accounts. So that's the cart HTML. If we look at models PY, we've got invoicing model here as timestamp users, train ID and amount. So we use this to log the invoice quantity and the transaction ID from Braintree every time we take a payment, which is quite handy. If we look in URLs, we have a cart URL, which is a, a, just a view, and we have a payment URL, which is actually an Ajax view. That's where we, um, we make Ajax calls for from the Braintree JS. So we look in views, in this one we're doing some, we're doing more mix-ins here. So we've got a gateway, Braintree account, payment data, generating a client token. So everything that we need to do with the Braintree API to make it work is happening in the API dot mix-ins. We're pulling the invoice through. Here we have a cart view. Only logged in users can access this view. And we're calling, um, and we're generating a Braintree client token. Uh, we're passing that through to the context, which is being picked up in cart. And I believe that comes through here. So we've got a script at the bottom here, which extends foot with the Braintree client token. That's used by Braintree.js. Okay, so that's how we're linking the back end to the front end in this instance. So we've also got a payment view, which is actually an Ajax function. 
So if request.method equals post, then we get these keywords from the uh, Ajax call itself, the Ajax post. We've got the amount. We don't need to convert that at all because Braintree takes it as a float. We get the agent ID. So as actually the only difference between the this project and the user authentication project is that when we sign up, um, what we now do is we add an agent ID to the user profile. So in the sign up view, in the sign up view, we have um, agent ID. So we call Braintree account, which is one of the mix-ins, and it creates an agent ID, which is assigned to the user profile. So that's the only difference between the two, really. So we back it, we, call, we get the agent ID, and then we've got if not agent ID, this is a safeguard. So if there isn't an agent ID for whatever reason, then we then call Braintree account again, and we add a new agent ID, and then we make a payment. So this is a mix-in as well, which we'll look at in a second, but we've, we're, we're throwing a lot of keyword arguments towards this class to create the payment itself. And if the payment is perfect and we create an invoice object, we save that and then we return JSON back to Ajax. And that's what we do. So we look in the mixins.py file. You can see we've got gateway, which we've already looked at. Depending on the environment that we're working in, if it's sandbox and we configure it in a slightly different way to whether it be production. Then we've got a function called generate client token, transact, find transaction. Okay, so they're just functions that we use down here. So we've got Braintree account. This is what we use. This is the class that we use to create a user account. So when a user signs up, we then call gateway.customer.create. We create an agent ID and we save it against the user profile. Quite simple. This is Braintree payment. We won't look at that yet. We'll look at Braintree data first and foremost. It's quite a simple class that uh, looks for all invoices that have been assigned to an agent ID. So again, we look at this gateway, we keep coming back to this gateway, and we've got gateway.transaction.search, and then we use list comprehension to create an invoice list, and that's what's returned. Lastly, we've got Braintree payment. So this is where we throw a lot of the keyword arguments, we use agent ID and a lot of other keyword arguments that are required and we've got a create function. So a payment method, gateway, again, which is at the top here, gateway equals. So gateway.payment method create, and we throw in there the customer ID, the payment method nonce, and options. So make default true, verify card true, and this all comes from the docs on Braintree. So it all comes from on here. What we then do is we find the agent and we make a transaction and we submit for settlement true. On the Stripe app, if we're having to create an invoice line, create an invoice and we submit that for settlement and then we pay it. On here it's a little bit less arduous. It's just one or two lines of code. And then we've got the, um, we're handling the actual result. So if the result was a success, then yeah, the message is perfect, and if it's not, then we actually get the code and the message from the transaction to find out why it didn't go through. So if the card was expired or the um, verification didn't work, then we'd get the message from the card and we pass that back through. So that's it, that's the end of the video. I hope that you can make use of this code in your own project. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and like. Bye-bye.